Hey everyone! In today's episode, we're going to learn how to use the Photoshop Sky Replacement tool to quickly replace any rendering or photo sky without any mask. We first need to make sure we have the correct version of Photoshop. This tool was added to Photoshop with version 22 in October 2020. After opening the image, we're going to go to Edit Sky Replacement. This is going to open the Sky Replacement dialog. After this, Photoshop is going to automatically create a mask for the sky. The precision is really good, but we can have some masking problems if the image has too many reflections or small objects close to the sky, like what we see in the face of the person in the image. The first option is a sky selection. In this section, we can select a new sky from one of the included presets, or we can add our own custom sky by pressing the Import from File button. We can select one or multiple skies with this option. We can also organize our skies with folders by pressing the Create New Sky Group button. If we right-click any group or image, we can find a few additional options. We can also access these options by pressing the gear icon on the top right corner of the panel. The first two options allow us to rename or delete the selected skies. We can also append the default skies group in case we remove them by accident. With the next option, Export Selected Skies, we can export the group as a .sky format. We can then use the Import Skies from Sky Preset option to load that group of skies. And the last option, Get More Skies, is going to take us to the Discover website where we can view and download Sky's images and presets for free. On the left side of the window, we have four options. The first one is the Sky Move tool. With this option, we can move the sky layer. This is a really useful tool along with the scale option. The next option is the Sky Brush. This option can help us to further refine the mask of the sky. The options are similar to the Photoshop brush we can select different shapes, blending modes, or opacity percentages. Next, we have the hand tool and the zoom tool. We also have a few additional options to help us adjust the sky. The chief edge is going to expand or contract the border between the sky and the original image. For example, we can see that if we change the shift edge number to minus 100, the new sky is barely visible. And if we increase the number to 100, the edge of the image starts to show the new sky inside of the building. The fade edge option is going to create a feather effect from the sky image to the original photo along the edges. For most images, we can use 50 to 100. With the brightness slider, we can adjust the overall brightness of the sky. In this case, we're going to try to get a similar value to the original photo. The temperature slider adjusts the sky warmer or cooler. For this example, we're going to try to get a more warmer color for the sky. And with the scale option, we can resize the sky. The flip option is really useful if the sun or light areas are in the opposite side of the image and we need to flip it horizontally. The blending mode includes two options, multiply and a screen. The multiply option is the default one and works well for most projects. The screen option is going to create a light effect for the blending of the original photo and the sky. This can be adjusted using the next slider. The lighting adjustment is going to lighten or darken the original image where it blends with the sky. For example, if we select the screen light mode and increase the lighting adjustment to 100, we can see the light effect. If we change the lighting mode back to multiply, it looks darker. But for this example, this is the mode we're going to use. The color adjustment can help us to color balance the original image with the sky colors. A value of zero has no effect and a value of 100 is going to have a full color adjustment to the image. In this example, as most of the colors are white and desaturated, we're not really able to see the effect. 
And the last option is Output. Here, we have two options, New Layers, which is the one selected by default, and the Duplicate layer. If we have New Layer selected and press the OK button, we can see that a new group has been created with the layers and adjustments we selected. This is also the option I recommend as it allows you to make additional adjustments to the image, including adjustments to the mask. For example, we can add a new hue and saturation adjustment to the sky. If we open the sky replacement again and select the duplicate layer option and press the OK button, we can see that a single flattened layer is created instead of the group of layers and adjustments we get with the new layer option. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to click the like and subscribe button. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. And thank you for watching.